Hi, Cole here from the Storytelling with Data team. When it comes to visualizing data in a business setting, I tend to be a proponent of the basics, bar charts and line graphs. But today I'd like to share a book that I recommend to those who are creating or consuming data visualizations who want to go beyond the basics. Let me grab it off the shelf. The book is Better Data Visualizations by John Schwabisch. Subtitle is A Guide for Scholars, Researchers, and Wonks, uh, which I actually think is a little bit too limiting. Uh, I think of this book like an encyclopedia of graphs. Uh, it's packed with content and examples. And actually, I did a podcast with John shortly after the book came out. Uh, that was in 2021. Let's take a look at a clip from that. But I do think it's, it's valuable for anybody who's working with data. And the basic thrust of the book is to give people a broader sense of the wide array of graphs that are available to them. I mean, we all know and all know how to read and create bar charts and line charts and pie charts. And that's because that's what we learned in grade school, right? Like my kids actually know like how to read a histogram. That was part of their education, which is awesome. Um, but you know, they don't know how to like read a slope chart or a dot plot or a network diagram. So like, and, and, and so, you know, part of it is just expanding people's graphic literacy. So when they go to their graphic toolbox and they open that toolbox and they say, oh, I've got this data here. I'm going to make a pie chart. There are other graph types out there. Some are better. Some are maybe not so good, but there are all other graph types. So the thrust of the book is giving people a broader array of graphs that they can use. And I'll make sure that we link to the audio podcast in the description down below. Uh, let's take a look though inside. So let's start up front, table of contents. So the book's organized into three primary sections. Starts off with part one, the principles of data visualization. There's a lot of content that's common to books on data visualization, right? Visual processing, perceptual ranking. John shares his five guidelines for better data visualizations. Show the data, reduce the clutter, integrate graphics and text, avoid the spaghetti chart and start with gray, right? pragmatic advice there. It's a chapter on form and function, audiences needs, incorporating those into our design choices. And then the real meat of the book is part two, chart types. So it's organized by what you might want to do with your graph, comparing categories, time, distribution, geospatial, relationship, part to whole. This continues, right? Qualitative data, tabular data. And within each of these, you can see there's a plethora of different types of graphs. Part three is designing and redesigning visuals. Actually, I think chapter 12 is one of my favorites of the book, um, mainly because I've never seen this content written out before. Uh, really pragmatic guide on how to develop and how to really think about and construct a data visualization style guide. So we'll take a look at that momentarily. I'm just gonna flip through some of the book here. Actually, in this first section, uh, chapter three, form and function, like your audience's needs drive your data visualization choices. John introduces a matrix here. So we have form going vertically, ranging from interactive at the bottom to static at the top, and then function across our horizontal axis, explanatory, exploratory. And John then goes on to describe each of these intersections, right? The quadrants and when you might think about using visuals there and, and how really to think about it. Let's see, it's good. Snapshot here. Uh, part two is, like I said, the meat of the book. We start with some of the basics, right? Bar charts for comparing categories, but it gets quickly more nuanced from there. I'm just going to highlight a couple of these. Uh, I've jumped now into the time uh, subsection to the bump chart. 
A variation on the line chart is the bump chart, which is used for plotting changes in ranks over time. For example, political polling or positions in a golf tournament from hole to hole. When we want to show relative ranks rather than the absolute values, the bump chart is a good choice. John goes on to say, however, a bump chart is, of course, a compromise. It does not show the raw values, which are often preferred, but it can be especially useful if your data have outliers. By plotting the ranks, we abstract from the large differences in magnitude. This is pretty typical of how each of these sections go. You know, here's the graph type, here's what it's good for, uh, followed by some limitations. And then he goes into a real world example. Many of these are taken from the media or other uh, public places. Um, John then goes on to connect it to a line graph here. And then a modification on the bump chart is a ribbon effect. We see that played out here. I think that's actually one of the things that I really appreciate about this is all of the connections that are made between different graph types and how they relate to each other. Because it turns out a lot of the more novel ways of visualizing data are actually rooted in some of the basics. And when you can gain that understanding of those connections, it can lend insight into both how to create and how to interpret some of these less common graph types. Let's take a look back at the book. Let's see what else did we flag here? The pyramid chart. Most often used to show changes in population-based metrics, such as birth rates, mortality rates, age, overall population levels, pyramid charts put two groups on either side of a center vertical axis subcategory of the diverging bar, right? So here's another example of connecting different uh, graph types. And then we see the example. I'm actually just going to flip through some of this now so you can get a sense of just the breadth and uh, sheer volume of different types of visuals and graphs, right? You see some maps in there, some comic strips even, bubble charts, some circular craziness, and so forth. Let's jump to part three for a moment. Uh, and I mentioned, but this is one of my favorite chapters of the book personally, which is developing a data visualization style guide. So John goes through the elements of a style guide, right? Things like the graph anatomy, color palette, font, and then actually goes into each of these dimensions and goes through what you would think about when you are setting a data visualization style guide. So for any teams who are visualizing data, it can be a great way to bring consistency to your work, having a style guide that everyone can refer to when it comes to some of the intricacies of the general approach to communicating with data. Um, the final section of the book, or the final chapter, I should say, is redesigns. So here we get to see some best practices in action and hear those or read those thought processes that go behind them. So I'll mention that John also did a video series uh, driven by the book called One Chart at a Time. It features videos from all sorts of different people in the data visualization world and beyond, each one talking about a given graph type from the book and showing through example some use cases and related considerations. I might recommend you check out the dot plot video. I may have had something to do with that. I'll mention also as I was preparing for this episode, I realized that I have not one, but two copies of Better Data Visualizations. Uh, and so I thought it'd be fun to do a giveaway. So leave a comment. Uh, this could be something you liked about this video or suggestions for future books that you'd like to see. Basically anything productive. And let's say uh, for the comments left in the next week, uh, after we post this video, we'll select a lucky winner from that uh, to whom I will ship my extra copy of Better Data Visualizations. 
So leave a comment if you'd like a shot at that. If you'd like to add better data visualizations to your library, you can click on the link that just appeared. If you're already familiar with the book, I'd welcome you to lend your perspective in the comments as well. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.